Okay, now we go. Hi there, everybody. This is Carrie Hamblin, the CEO and president of the Las Cruces Green Chamber of Commerce, coming to you again with another one of our Zoom chats that are benefits for our member businesses. And today I'm very excited to see him again face to face. Well, face to face, not person to person, but we're still face to face. He's the conductor of the Las Cruces Symphony. It's the uh, music director and conductor, Ming Luke. It's so nice to see you again. And you are just rocking it in with the Las Cruces Symphony. Yeah, we're really excited. Uh, we kick off our uh, season uh, this weekend. Uh, we had a little preview, of course, in our gala um, a few weeks ago, uh, early September. But this weekend is the full orchestra and fantastic music, fantastic players. So it's going to be very exciting. Oh, uh, I, you know, I think, um, you know, what's what's going to be very exciting for us is just the program. But I'm wondering. Yeah, you know, you've 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 been good with partnerships, and last time uh, you did some local partnerships, and and how was that experience for you? How you know, and then how did that shape like how you're approaching this season opener? I think for me, you know, the the orchestra, the members are part of the community, and my favorite part about uh, being a conductor is the collaboration between all the musicians that come from completely different areas that all have different lives and yet we can all come together for this one concert. But for me, this doesn't have to stop here. And Las Cruces and the region, they, we have so many fantastic arts organizations and it's just very natural to try to figure out some collaborations which can benefit us all and create fantastic events like this weekend. So for instance, Borderlands Ballet, you know, um, uh, Las Cruces Chamber uh, Ballet, you know, um, these organizations are going to be joining us on stage when we do ballet music from Swan Lake. And it just is natural. The music was written for the ballet. Um, it is supposed to be, um, you know, tied to movement and the music is. And so why not present it as such? Well, I'm wondering, so as a, a non, I don't have a music background at all, but I'm wondering, how do you work on getting the music performed in a way that your work, because you're working with like live, like, I mean, with the dancers. And so there's obviously like you're watching them and they're watching you, the dancers are watching you, right? When you're performing the music, how does that go? Cause I think it's like some like little behind the scenes stuff that, that uh, you're, you're doing there. Yeah, it's just slightly different for this concert because in this concert, the orchestra is actually going to be on stage and behind the dancers. And so there's very little chance for the dancers to actually um, be able to see um, uh, me and while I'm conducting. Um, for traditional ballet, uh, the orchestra is in the pit and the mm -hmm. dancers are on stage, but there's also, you know, sets and costumes, etc. Um, but for this particular instance, you know, the music of Swan Lake, we're going to be, I'm going to be looking backward and forward at the same time. So forward to the orchestra, backward to the dancers, and they'll have the entire, it's going to be a very different experience for them because usually the, the pit, you know, the sound is meant to go to the audience. And so for right. the dancers, it's a very different experience to have all the musicians on the same level as the stage where they are. And I think it's going to be a very visceral experience where they can really feel the music directly. Well, it's because the music's going to be, is the, the orchestra going to be at the back of the stage and the dancers are going to be in the front? Yep, so that exactly. music is really coming towards them. It's going through the dancers and then to the audience. Yeah, exactly. And it's going to be a very visually stunning thing because, again, you get to see the entire orchestra in a pit. You don't necessarily see the entire orchestra or sometimes a smaller group. Mm -hmm. But for this particular concert, we have the full orchestra. It's actually a bigger one that we normally have. And, of course, the dancers as well. So, um, so why Romeo and Juliet? Romeo and Juliet is one of the most uh, uh, fantastic works of music. It's one of my favorites. Um, you know, everything is just so evocative. Um, you know, Prokofiev absolutely loved the story and every little vignette, this musical vignette um, of the various scenes is so potent. And we're actually teaming up with the NMSU theater department and they're going to be having actors and actresses actually speak the soliloquies in advance of each of the movements. So you know exactly what the music is supposed to be about. So instead of, you know, Prokofiev wrote the title, um, you know, The Young Juliet, but when you actually hear the entire introduction soliloquy about Juliet and then you hear the music, it is a much closer, again, collaboration. So we have three groups that we are collaborating with this uh, this opening concert. Well, you know, I I think you know collaborations are fantastic, and and 
you know, you, you, you know, you're lucky when those collaborations, especially the more you add, the more when it, when those collaborations really produce an ex exceptional product, right. When in this case, the performance. And so, um, you know, and you're big on collaborations. You've been doing that. I think most of your career is the, is the collaborations. And so it's, it's going to, I love that you're bringing in the theater department as well. Yeah, well, it's going to be a lot of fun because again, you know, these musicians, uh, these composers were influenced by the words. And so it just makes complete sense to have the words they were inspired by to create the music that we're all going to listen to. Well, you know, I mean, you're, you've given us a tease of, of uh, things that we're going to expect. What do you, for a newcomer that might be going to this concert for the first time, what do you hope that they'll take away from Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet? I think it's just the power. You know, I mean, like, like the thing about Romeo and Juliet is that the emotions are so intense, whether it's just absolute sheer joy, it's the, um, the teenage love of Romeo and Juliet, or it's their deaths at the end and sort of the antagonism of the families and none of those are tame emotions and so the orchestra and the music also reflects that and so you know at the very beginning the first thing that you hear is this huge crescendo that goes into the entire orchestra playing as loud as they can and it's this chord that just really symbolizes the intensity of this work and so it's a very it's going to be a very um uh uh a wonderful live music experience. This is this is might be a, an off question. Is um, when you're not in the like so your your performance schedule with the Las Cruces Symphony uh, really kind of focuses around the school year, um, the semesters. And so, what do you do during the summer months? Uh, as you're, are you are you like looking at all these different like pieces that you can bring in? Because the Las Cruces Symphony isn't the only group that you work with. And so I'm imagining that you might have like a lot of post-its stuck all over the place in terms of what, what you're planning. Yeah, I think um, most uh, performing arts organizations follow the academic year, just like uh, uh, schools and universities. And then all of them will have summer seasons of some sort. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of musicians will actually bop around to various organizations. And then during the summer, they might have organizations that they do just for the summer. Um, so during the year, yes, I'm working with Las Cruces Symphony. I have another orchestra in Central uh, Valley, California called the Merced Symphony. I work with San Francisco Ballet, Nashville Ballet. And then in addition to that, I also have a chorus um, and I work with the Berkeley Symphony for Education Concerts. It's sort of a typical life of a musician. You're playing and every single weekend is a different location. And the same thing goes for these musicians that are playing the Las Cruces Symphony. I mean, you have musicians that uh, might play with us one week and then El Paso Symphony the next week, mm -hmm. and they might actually go to Albuquerque. I mean, like we have a lot of uh, uh, tra uh, traveling musicians. But during the summer, um, I have a lot of different organizations that I work with. There's an organization in Napa um, that I do the administration for, and that takes up quite a bit of time. But in the planning for the various seasons, like we are starting to plan next season for the various organizations now. Uh, yeah. And so yeah. the budget needs to be done by, you know, the beginning of, uh, of the upcoming year, like 2024, so that when we release all the information, all the guest artists are planned, all the repertoire is planned, all the dates are set. There's a lot of details that take a lot of organization um, and that takes at least a full year in advance. Yeah, I bet. I mean, I, I can't even imagine because you also have to get like the rights for the music and everything too, right? Yep, you have to get the rights for the music. Um, uh, guest artists are oftentimes uh, booked uh, years in advance, especially now that we're finally out of pandemic. Um, and, uh, you know, concert dates, um, you, you know, we try to make sure that we don't have conflicts with El Paso Symphony or the other organizations that might um, be using the same musicians as we have in our orchestra. Mm -hmm. And so our goal is really just to try to get as organized as possible so we don't run into issues later on. Well, I'm so glad you're you're so good at logistics because I can't even imagine, uh, you know, your sleep schedule with uh, that kind of schedule and then planning the logistics. And and so we kind of went off. To, I took us off track, but I'm really grateful to get that kind of inside skinny on on yeah. uh, how you make all that magic come together, because it does take a lot of planning. And that's why I think it's really important that, you know, communities continue to support the arts. And, you know, when we've got an, an exceptional performance, especially for Coffee of Romeo and Juliet, and just the collaborations that you have to help uplift all of the other elements that we have in this community. 
Yeah, we're we're pretty lucky in Las Cruces because there are a lot of very dedicated um, um, uh, artists and nonprofit uh, performing ensembles and whatnot. And the it can be very difficult um, to survive, especially during pandemic. I mean, like all of us in the nonprofit world, at least, we're, we're having quite a difficult uh, time. And I think everybody was, you know, in terms of uh, um, commercial business as well as just our day-to-day lives. Yeah. But for organizations like this, I think it really helps to uh, um, connect and cross-pollinate, you know, so, you know, the theater groups might know more about to the ballet and to the symphony and vice versa, the symphony groups, uh, our Las Cruces symphony members will know about, you know, NMSU, the theater department, as well as these two different ballet companies, you know, and there's still, um, you know, um, multiple uh, um, uh, schools and ballet uh, uh, programs around, so there's a lot of it's it's good to highlight those um, arts providers in our community. Yeah, I think we can't we can't afford to work in silos anymore. And I think that's wonderful that you've got that that that, that is a value of the Las Cruces Symphony Orchestra and is you to really bring in those collaborations. Um, I wish you the best of luck. Uh, you know, as we say, you know, break a leg and, uh, you know, in this weekend's performance of Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet. Uh, Ming Link is the uh, Ming Luke is the music director and conductor of the Las Cruces Symphony Orchestra. And if you'd like more information on how you can purchase tickets to Prokofiev's Romeo and Juliet this weekend uh, on the NMSU campus, the information is either above or below. And you can also find their whole season schedule uh, there at the website that you'll see. And so thank you very much, uh, Ming. It's always a pleasure to see you and, and hear about just your enthusiasm and the energy that you're bringing uh, to these performances. And and uh, and I'll, I'll make it there some someday i know i will and so i'm really yeah, excited about that thank you for having me and of course you're always welcome and uh, everybody else too it should be fun concerts thank you so much well we will see you soon take care